Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to Saudi Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of May. Indian PM Modi meets German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin. Taliban's Prime Minister Mullah Akhund calls to end international meddling in Afghan affairs. And thousands rush back home, indulge in shopping in Bangladesh and India ahead of Eid. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday held his first in-person meeting with Germany's newly appointed Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin during the first leg of his three-nation Europe trip that will also take him to Denmark and France. It is PM Modi's first foreign trip of the year and the first since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Both the leaders reviewed full range of bilateral ties, including giving an impetus to trade as well as cultural linkages. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived at Berlin Brandenburg Airport in Germany on the first leg of his visit to three European nations on Monday. Upon his arrival, PM Modi expressed confidence that the visit will boost the friendship between India and Germany. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz later received PM Modi in a ceremonial welcome at the Federal Chancellery in Berlin. He was accorded the Guard of Honor at the forecourt of the Federal Chancellery. The two leaders held one-on-one -on -one discussions where they reviewed the full range of bilateral ties between India and Germany, including giving an impetus to trade as well as cultural linkages. Discussions in the bilateral talks covered key areas of bilateral cooperation under the overall strategic partnership as well as regional and global developments. PM Modi and Olaf Scholz later co-chaired the 6th India-Germany Intergovernmental Consultations IGC, a unique biennial format which India conducts only with Germany. Indian Prime Minister and the German Chancellor post the meeting signed the Green and Sustainable Energy Partnership. Scholz told reporters that Germany is making 10 billion euros, that is 10.52 billion US dollars, available for bilateral cooperation with India in the coming years. Situation in Ukraine also came up in the meeting. PM Modi during the press statement said India sides with no nation, only peace. He reiterated India's stance that there will be no winners in Russia-Ukraine war. Unlike Germany, India is taking a neutral role and refraining from imposing sanctions against Russia. And Saudi Arabia has agreed to provide Pakistan with a sizable package of around 8 billion US dollars to help the cash starved country revive its ailing economy. The latest sign of support follows a visit to Saudi Arabia by Pakistan's new Prime Minister, Shehbaz Sharif, who has inherited a crippling national debt, galloping inflation, and a weak rupee. Saudi Arabia has agreed to provide Islamabad with a sizable package of around 8 billion US dollars to help the cash starved country after the visit of newly elected Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif to the Gulf nation, media reports said on Sunday. The financial package includes doubling of the oil financing facility, additional money through deposits, and rolling over of the existing 4.2 billion US dollars facilities. A joint statement said Saudi Arabia and Pakistan will discuss the possibility of supporting the kingdom's 3 billion US dollars deposit in Pakistan's central bank by extending its term or through other options. With a yawning current account deficit and foreign reserves falling to as low as 10.8 billion US dollars, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external finances. Pakistan's inflation rate rose to a two year high of 13.37% in April compared to the same month last year, its Statistics Bureau said on Sunday. The government, however, said on Saturday it would maintain subsidies to keep fuel and power prices steady for customers, going against International Monetary Fund or IMF's recommendations as the country seeks to boost its US$6 billion rescue package with the fund. An IMF mission is due to arrive in Pakistan in May to resume discussions. If the review is cleared, Pakistan will get more than $900 million 
which would in turn unlock additional external funding. Moving on, acute power shortage leading to prolonged load shedding has continued to be a primary cause of worry for the residents of Gilgit Baltistan. Locals have blamed authorities on not doing much to resolve the issue despite the region having abundant water resources to generate sufficient hydroelectricity. Locals in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan have lamented they are facing innumerable problems from poor road infrastructure to prolonged load shedding that have continued to disrupt their lives. Unannounced power outages of 5 to 6 hours daily affected businesses and people had a distressing time throughout the holy fasting month of Ramadan. Locals said authorities are not doing much to solve the issue despite the region having abundant water resources to generate sufficient hydroelectricity. Locals have time and again held protests over the issue, accusing Pakistan of meting out a stepmotherly treatment to the illegally occupied region as it has failed to develop the infrastructure over the years, leaving them high and dry. And in news from Afghanistan, Afghans celebrated their first Eid al-Fitr festival under the new Taliban government after 20 years on Sunday. Though the war has ended with the Taliban victory, Kabul residents are not happy with the economic crisis besetting the country. Prime Minister Mohammad Hassan Akhund, who delivered his first Eid speech, urged Afghanistan's neighbors and the international community to stop interfering in the country's internal affairs. Prime Minister of the Islamic Emirate Mullah Muhammad Hassan Akund on Sunday delivered his first Eid speech after the Taliban seized control of Afghanistan last August. At the Eid al-Fitr prayer ceremony that marks the end of Muslim fasting month of Ramadan, Akund urged Afghanistan's neighbors and the international community to stop interfering in the country's internal affairs. He also criticized the freezing of Afghanistan's assets by the United States and said, the world should stay committed to its promises. Afghan celebrated Eid al-Fitr for the first time under the Taliban rule after 20 years, as people thronged to the markets on Sunday to buy goods. However, shoppers complained of high prices and shop owners were worried about the lack of sales. The World Bank earlier in April issued a dire outlook for Afghanistan's economy, noting that per capita income had fallen by over a third in the last four months of 2021 following the seizure of power by the Islamist Taliban as US-led foreign forces withdrew. It said around 37% of Afghan households did not have enough money to cover food, while 33% could afford food but nothing more. Well, the economic situation in Sri Lanka has led to huge protest across the country with the demand for the resignation of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa and President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. On the final day of the week-long protest march on Sunday, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said that his party is getting ready to develop the country with the blessings of the people. Premadasa early announced that a no-confidence motion would be moved against the government in the parliament session starting this week. Thousands of supporters of Sri Lankan opposition parties rallied on Sunday in capital Colombo as a weeks-long political and economic crisis showed no sign of abating. Opposition parties ended a week-long march from the central city of Kennedy with thousands of supporters thronging Colombo's Independence Square. Many carried Sri Lankan flags and wore headbands reading Gota Go Home, one of the main rallying cries of the protests. Sajit Premadasa, chief of the Samagi Janabala Vigaya party, addressed protesters, telling the crowd that his party have taken a decision not to make any deals with the government of thieves or their partners. मेरा तो घोड़े ना गाने ना 
අපි සූදානම් වන්නේ ජනතාව ලබා දෙන ජනතා ආශිර්වාදය Sri Lanka's economy was hit hard by the pandemic and tax cuts by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's government. Dwindling foreign currency reserves have left the island nation of 22 million people struggling to pay for fuel, food and medicine imports and brought thousands onto the streets in daily protests that have occasionally turned violent. Rajapaksa was hit by mass resignations from his cabinet last month and now faces the possibility of a no confidence vote in his reformed government later in the week. He and his elder brother Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa have both refused to resign instead calling for a unity government led by the president and offer that opposition rejects. And thousands of people across Bangladesh and India over the weekend rushed to their hometowns and indulged in shopping ahead of Eid ul-Fitr. The festival, which marks the culmination of Islam's holy fasting month of Ramadan, will be celebrated in India and Bangladesh on Tuesday based on the sighting of the moon. Thousands of Bangladeshis rushed to Dhaka's main train station and the ferry terminals over the past weekend in hope to board trains and ferries to return to their hometowns to celebrate the Eid al-Fitr holidays. After two years of restrictions, many expressed happiness that transportation is back to normal and they can find an easier way to head home, as last year land transport was terminated to stop people from crossing state borders due to the spread of COVID-19. Bangladesh will celebrate Eid on Tuesday. Every year, millions leave the capital Dhaka during the Eid festival on ferries, buses and trains. The South Asian country has hit over 1.9 million of COVID-19 cases, with over 29,000 deaths so far. <laughs> Meanwhile, Muslims in parts of India on Sunday thronged markets to buy new clothes and food items ahead of Eid, which will be celebrated in the country on May 3 as per sighting of the moon. The festival is traditionally celebrated by tucking into large feasts with family members. I have shopping for two years. I have been shopping for two years. I have Eid al-Fitr marks the culmination of Ramadan, the ninth month of Islamic calendar, during which Muslims across the world observe fasting from dawn to dusk and make every effort to be more spiritual and charitable. And running over a span of weeks, depending weekly on astrology, Nepal's longest-running Ratu Mahichindranath Chariot Festival began on Sunday. A 32-feet-high chariot is constructed by the Nevar community annually for the festival, which is pulled around the city for about two months. Nepal's longest-running Ratu Machindranath Chariot Festival began on Sunday in Lalitpur city with hundreds of devotees praying for rain and good harvest. A 32-feet-high chariot of Lord Ratu Machindranath, the god of rain, is constructed annually by the Nevar community using wooden beams and thumbed adjustments without using a single nail. It takes about a week for the community to build it before the chariot is pulled around the city for about two months. The festival is held by the end of April or early May, but the coronavirus pandemic pushed back the procession multiple times in the past two years. <laughs> It is believed that locals started the chariot procession in the year 897 AD. The centerpiece of the ritual came with the display of a jeweled vest said to have been given to a farmer by a serpent king more than 1,000 years ago. Lost by the farmer and claimed by a demon, legend has it that the West has since been held by Ratu Machindranath for its rightful owner to claim in the presence of the king or president. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.